In this video, I am going to talk about three main things in relation to my experience learning Blender and digital art during high school from the age of 14 to 17, which is now. I'm going to try and give you guys some of my best tips and little nuggets of knowledge that have arisen from my experience and my time floundering around. Let's get right into it with the first thing, which is that if you're new, you're probably going to suck for a long time. This is something you've probably heard from a lot of people in your lives. However, it is important to note that even if you suck, you should not be miserable working on whatever you're working on. There's a difference between pushing through difficult parts of learning and forcing yourself to follow all 8 hours of a donut tutorial and give up because you find yourself overwhelmed or uninterested in the subject matter. By the way, real quick, my thoughts on the donut tutorial by Blender Guru are that it is a excellently put together the tutorial series which he updates, puts a lot of care into, it's got lots and lots of good knowledge in it, and easily most of what you know to get started with Blender. However, I do think that it risks information overload for a completely new learner. And also the subject matter being a donut, a lot of people are just not very motivated or passionate about finishing it because they just don't see the kind of like potential for their own interests and crafts. So I think that it's a great tutorial to follow after you're like kind of sold on the idea that Blender can help you to create some visions and like stuff that you want to make. Then you can jump to the donut tutorial and that's going to get you a lot more technically literate. I think that he does a good job of being entertaining, being a nice teacher. But ultimately, it might just be a better approach to follow a more specific tutorial to a niche that you're interested in. And if you have no real like specific interests and like stuff that you want to make in 3D, then just like find something you're interested in real life, whether that be like guitars or like guns, mechs, tanks, anything. So I guess my first point related a lot to that donut tutorial because it gets brought up a lot and there's a lot of people who argue for it and against it and I just am sort of of the opinion that it's, it's a great tutorial series, it's just not necessarily meant for everyone so don't force yourself to do it. And even while the ugly duckling phase is inevitable while you're learning Blender at first, you're not doomed to be stuck in it for ages or anything. There's no kind of time prescription of how long you're going to suck at Blender. It's just very tough to start and then it just gets easier and easier. As you don't just get better at Blender, you get better at learning Blender, and I think that that's the key thing, which makes it a lot easier over time to pick up new skills and to kind of build on what you've already got. It's very hard to kind of build a sandcastle on top of nothing, but if you've already built up like a real good mound, you know, then like placing stuff on those foundations and like kind of building off from that's a lot easier. Might be a bad analogy, but it's just what came to mind first, you know. I myself have helped coach three or so friends from zero experience to being far more competent than I was after an entire year or so of learning, and this is over a matter of two months. That is about six times the pace, and these people are already making game assets, and the stuff that they've made is honestly a lot better than some of the stuff that I've seen floating around on marketplaces like Sketchfab. And yeah, ultimately I guess the point is to not get um, a feeling of being pigeonholed into a certain tutorial series or whatever because you've heard that it's good. Um, to kind of be open to just like trying stuff that you feel like you're interested in and also don't feel restricted by how much time people say that it's going to take for you to no longer suck up Blender for you to learn it because ultimately if you take a different approach from other people or if you've got somebody who's experienced and who you get along well with in terms of you like jive with the way that they teach and they take you through things that's going to be a lot faster obviously as long as you're committed on your end it's like someone's not going to magically just make you good at Blender but they can really expedite that whole process hugely for you. Now, I'm not telling you to buy a course, but speaking of which, there is some possibility of me in the future opening up some kind of short exclusive course at some pretty cheap price, so if you'd like to support that endeavor, please check out my Ko-Fi. You can support me there while getting pretty cheap access to a lot of my work in the form of the Blend files there. Getting sidetracked by my shameless plugs. Um, we'll get straight back into it though. Blender looks very scary at first, but the depth is a lot less than you think it is. It's kind of like if you're looking at an ocean. I know that there's kind of objective ways to tell how deep something is, but you're kind of going to assume looking at like ocean water that is very deep but sometimes when you take the step in it's actually like gonna be a lot more shallow than you think it is okay that was a horrible analogy anyways better and more kind of relevant analogy take a look at this product render which I made recently now I'm not a kind of guy who's ever really made product renders the closest I've ever really come before is making this tire and then also this like kind of like weird piece of tech that was heavily inspired by some YouTube time-lapse video that I watched safe to say that this is far from my specialty however I simply looked up a few images and I looked up a couple of tutorials of people making product renders on YouTube just kind of like skim them to get a general feel of like the way that they were placing things around and all of that and I'm able to put this thing together in two hours it's far from perfect it's very simple it's kind of flat but I made everything here except for the foliage there's no way I'm making that in two hours but anyways stuff that you don't specialize in and have very little idea about because I mostly do like anime stuff I mostly do like short film stuff 
sci-fi stuff, you know, all kinds of other things which are sort of a lot more, like, fantastical and that were divorced from reality, but yeah, this stuff, I just, I don't have much experience with it, but once you get higher up in Blender, it's, it's really not that scary to just, like, tackle new, like, areas of Blender and stuff. You can reach out and branch out to, like, wildly different, um, job opportunities and all of that very, very quickly, um, once you've got that foundation. Yeah, you may feel like you're learning extremely slowly, as I did for like a full year. Trust me, all of that's really gonna pay off. Like, look at these old short film projects. Like, they, they don't necessarily suck, but they're certainly not very good, and they took me a lot of hours to make. Like, some of them were close to 100 hours to make, and I put in way more effort than I do to a lot of projects nowadays. And yet, the, the results just weren't that great. However, the learning experiences that I gained from these, and the kind of, like, struggles and, like, huge annoyances that just, like, breaking stuff and like having stuff not saved properly and all of that that taught me a heap yeah i wouldn't have traded that time spent on that for much else to be honest looking back on it because it gave me so much growth and nowadays i can spend half the time and make something about four times as good the passion you know and the kind of interest in the stuff i'm making is a common factor you know and the mistakes are also a common factor i mean i still make plenty of mistakes nowadays but they just get less and less severe on average um anyways the final point is something which I've already touched on a few times, but it's probably my favorite one. Um, just have fun. It's the only way that you'll learn, like, in the long term. In the short term, if you do some, like, really, like, brutal, like, stuff, you know, slog yourself through, like, 20 hours of just modeling stuff, you know, you just, like, skip all the YouTube tutorials, and you know, for, like, maybe, like, 5% of people, they're gonna be able to do that, and it's gonna be very beneficial. It's like, for the majority of people, if you don't choose something that's fun, Alright, it's gonna pay off well in the short term, but it's not gonna pay off well in the long term if most of people drop it, you know, if most of people just like drop Blender because they're not doing something they're interested in. So, yeah, going back to the donut tutorial, if you love donuts, then I'd highly recommend doing that. But, for many of you, it might be more practical to make it like a simpler thing that you're more interested in, you know, and you don't have to follow as long of a tutorial for it necessarily, you just kind of like follow on a bit more loosely. You'll get a much worse result than if you followed the donut tutorial in terms of quality, but that's because you're not being handheld, you know, and arguably you'll still learn a fair amount of it if you just keep doing that over and over again. It'll be less efficient in some ways, but you'll be more likely to complete it, and you'll be more likely to enjoy it, and therefore you'll be more likely to get good at Blender, which is the important thing, right? Like, this is obviously targeted at beginners, you know, but like, I think that this keeps applying throughout, you know, it's like, you have to take breaks to do stuff that you don't enjoy for the benefit of yourself, and that's just kind of life. But you shouldn't have to do that all the time. It'll be up and down, but keep going, and you'll get there, as long as you're having fun more of the time than you're not having fun. And if you aren't, you should probably take a step back and rethink things. I was planning on making a video on a Boy in the Heron project, which I started on, but I ran into a roadblock. Hence why I made this video instead. But still, look forward to that in the future though, and thanks to the person who recommended that to me. Thank you so much for all the support and kindness from you guys this year, I deeply appreciate you all, and the things that this channel has encouraged me to learn and try. Um, by the way, I know that more was promised, but this will probably be my last video for this year. I'll be taking a break for about a bit over a month to spend time with family and friends, enjoy the New Year's. So I hope each and every one of you has fun over the coming weeks, building up to the New Year's and Christmas. Thanks so much, as always, for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. It's been Ezen, and goodbye.